Welcome to Tea with Phil and Jen. We're here with a very special friend of ours, Ken Cohen of Talking Tea, a podcast dedicated to tea. And tea culture. Tea, tea, tea and tea culture. culture. That's right. Yeah, yes. that's a fantastic yeah. resource. Uh, we're Thank really you. excited. We just finished the uh, Philadelphia Coffee and Tea Festival, and we're in post-festival mode, just relaxing with Ken. We're going to talk to you today about Lapsam Suchong. Yep. Uh, check out his podcast for uh, some great details about the history and the uh, background of Lapsam. And we'll also talk a bit about the process. and mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, so... And here we're going to brew it, and we're going to just have a little chat with Ken over some Lapsam Suchum. We'll get yes. into a little bit of the brewing details. We'll ask Ken a few questions about talking tea, sure. and basically we'll just have a good time. Yeah, yep. yeah. All right, so yep. let's get brewing. Yeah. So, uh... Typical our style, forget the tea table, so we use a really uh, <laughs> simple tea cloth to help with this. Yeah, and I think it's good to see that... Um, Especially having just been in Philly, it's nice to see that Gong Fu style tea doesn't have to be ornamental and decorated and a, an elaborate setup. We still have lots of gear here with us, but if you don't have a tea table, you can just use a wastewater bowl or, I mean, just a few moments ago we were chatting about your travel Gong Fu set. So yes. you can yeah. kind of pull it off anywhere if you just yeah. bring a thermos of hot water. Right. We did it at the top of the Empire State Building once. Oh, nice. Yeah. Which was kind of fun. But, you know, you'll never get the best quality tea out of the thermos. But so how do you guys define Gong Fu style, Gong Fu Cha? Because I know some people say you have to use a Yixing pot for Gong Fu style. I, uh, I define Gong Fu style as any kind of small vessel with small tasting cups. I'm like you. Hi, a higher Two concentration, infusions. yeah, yeah, many yes. infusions. Higher yeah. concentration of tea to water. What do you guys? Yeah, same, same, same as you. Here. I think you and I both think of Gong Fu simply as uh, Chinese style brewing. So larger yeah. amount of leaves, smaller infusion vessel, and multiple infusions. Mm -hmm. You can profile it one by one if you want, or often if it's yeah. for more practical reasons, we'll just stack up the infusions. If you know, if you're in the office or whatever, you need to make some tea. Right. You know, it, it can give you the full tasting experience, but it can also be very simple, just a way to get a better quality brew. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I I I had only recently heard of the restriction of yeasting pot for yeah. gong fu, but and I'm not picky. If somebody says that's how it's supposed to be, it's okay. Right. It's just as long right. as I get to brew my tea. Right. Yeah. So here, I just so quickly want to show you how much tea leaves I put. This one, oops, I put a little bit more than I wanted. And this one is usually how much I put for the teas. We recommend like uh, three grams and to start with, but always experiment with what suits your best. And if you put you put not enough, steep a little bit longer. Right. And if you don't, uh, you put too much, just quicker infusions. I'm pretty flexible with that. And I always get uh, sort of confused by grams, especially since um, my uh, digital scale broke. Uh, a few weeks ago, and I haven't replaced Jeez. it yet. Yeah. So I just eyeball it basically. But uh, three grams of this tea would be about a teaspoon, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm really awful at that. Okay. Somebody yeah. asked me at the festival, and I was guessing because I, I don't know how many. Um, it's a, an ounce is 25 grams, so that's quite a right. bit. Right. So uh, yeah, and a some of our five gram teas, I would say a quarter ounce. But you know, people who are watching can see what you put in the in the guy one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I really try to avoid of a strict amount because it yeah. really depends on the vessel and how many people you are serving, right? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have a bigger crowd and yeah. you just put yeah. more leaves. Yeah, if you have a large gaiwan or a large yeasting pot, you, you know, you need, to, you need to put an appropriate amount for the amount of water you're now, about to hit. Now, so we have, um, most of our gaiwans are this size but uh, at home, but we also have one that's a bit bigger. It's maybe... Um, so I'm going to use uh, American measurements. This is about four ounces, mm -hmm. wow. and we have one that's six ounces. Yep. So it's uh, thirty percent bigger. Yep. We tend to use those for, like, uh, our first flush Darjeeling comes out very nicely in, in that one. If we're serving for, if we're serving more people, mm -hmm. do you think this one needs to be brewed in a smaller vessel? It seems to me this probably has a good am amount of uh, latitude. For, uh, uh, what do you I'm think? Not I usually use the ratio, the leaves and uh, okay. vessel ratio. So it's like, like you said, cover the bottom is something good to yep. start. Because sometimes when you put too less of the leaves, it's, the flavor is not fully there. Yes, right. So yeah. it mm -hmm. affects the uh, 
tasting experience, especially when you're evaluating the tea, it kind of has some effect there. Well, this morning when I made this at home, the top grade lapsang that we're having now, um, I wasn't sure it was my first time making it, so I used a little bit less because I didn't want to be have it overpowering. But then I let it go a little bit longer than what you recommended. So and it came out almost as good as when mm -hmm. you've been making it th today. Not quite, but almost. <laughs> yeah, because we also use the spring water. I don't know. I really like to, oh, when yeah, I travel, yeah. I see the difference of the water a lot and how it affects the tea. In yeah. the festivals, we try to use actually distilled water. Yeah, I think I got a purified water. Purified? I, avo purified. I avoided spring water for, on purpose because yeah, I had some bad yeah. experiences with uh, sediment and right. stuff after several right. boils. You start yeah. to get yeah. those minerals building up. And, yeah. and I was using filtered Philadelphia tap water this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which that's is, what we use at home too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so especially the mineral water can affect the clarity. After yes, some time. yeah, sure. So speaking of clarity, maybe we can have a look at the clarity of our. Our yep. liquor here yep. for the, uh, that's the non-smoking or the top grade? This is the top grade. This is the uh, non-smoking. Actually, this one is slightly mm -hmm. like golden color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or this one is a little bit reddish. Mm -hmm. I would have thought right? that the smoking, the, 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 the more heavily smoked tea, which was the top grade, would have been the more reddish color. Darker color. I was a little surprised by that myself. That's right. Because we were talking about the process a little bit in the podcast. But uh, like this kind of color, the higher grade tea, usually they have this kind of a really gold, beautiful clarity uh, uh, mm -hmm. liquor. And uh, this is uh, the color of the liquor is heavily affected by the oxidation process. I see, mm -hmm. I see. So it's so the oxidation we're seeing in the yes. deeper color, not the smoke. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's people really just... Just hold those in front of the other camera too. This one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little... I, I actually feel good. like uh, the uh, clear cup make that really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's a really like with the angle. Yeah. Good. No, it's it's uh, it's a beautiful golden color. Yeah. I was talking because uh, sometimes when we have oolong tea, some of the oolong, especially Yan Cha people, feel like it should be really dark. Yeah. Red color. No. So this is the darker color, which is the non-smoky, non non-smoky, non yeah. uh, which we discussed in the audio podcast on ta Talking Tea is um, a lower grade, right? Mm -hmm. and, That's right. Yep. And it's... No shame in it. And there's no... no. And it, is it smoked at all? Uh, it's not a smoke like the pine wood smoke, but it's still draw, uh, like a... It's, it's still a, roasted. Yeah. It's roasted, roasted, but not smoked. Right. Yeah. yeah. It and has it has a darker color. Yeah. yeah. So, and this is our non-smoky here. Uh, this is the uh, top grade. Okay. This is, this is the, the top grade. Yeah. We're, sh we're sharing cups, so we have to sort yeah. that out. So <laughs> let's ha let's have a taste of that tea, and, uh, and we'll s we'll start. Uh, the non-smoky first, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's very nice. Mm. Yeah. It's but it's a very classic Chinese black or red tea yeah, taste I profile. I think so. I feel like a lot of uh, Chinese black tea has that uh, floral, fruity, really happy elements in it. It's very happy, it very and sweet. Yes, definitely yeah. sweet. Definitely that's has right. a sweetness that's. Yeah. I'll say unique to black tea. Even when other teas like uh, oolongs exhibit sweetness, it's in a different, it's a different manifestation. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to try the uh, top grade? Yeah, sure. Let's try the top grade. And this is smoky. Yeah. Yeah. But not overpoweringly. Not at all. No. And, um, our prior, when we had the tea during the podcast, it was a little cooler, and I found the smoke was a little more pronounced. Yes. I find it's a little more integrated when it's warm. Yeah, we got so uh, we got so busy talking, we forgot to drink the tea. So. Yes. Uh, but if you want to know more about the details of uh, tasting and how we feel about the tea, so we will keep that for the podcast. For the and audio podcast, yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, so I guess to get started, or... One Thank of the you. things I was wondering was, how did you get into uh, not just tea, but how, what, what was your sort of starting point to say, hey, I want to do a podcast about tea? So it's two different stories. Which one do you want to hear? Uh, the, the podcast. Okay, so... How did you get the pod... What, what was your impetus to kick off a podcast? So in the spring of 2013, I started working as a um, host and correspondent for a, a podcast called Rep Radio, which is a podcast covering... Um, local and regional theater here okay. in Philadelphia and New York. And we would do, very similar to Talking Tea format, we would do behind the scenes interviews with actors, playwrights, okay. and directors 
um, about current productions in this area. And, uh, and I really like that. And the, uh, the person who runs Rap Radio encouraged all of us, if we wanted to, to go out and start our own podcast. So um, about two, a little over two years ago, two and a half years ago at this point, uh, we saw um, a great need. There was Philadelphia has sort of a dearth of tea culture. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great city, but tea culture is still catching on here. Yeah, it's getting there. quickly. It's though. getting it's, it's quickly. getting there. Yes, yes. I yeah. mean the the it's tremendous the growth, but two and a uh, two and a half years ago it was still not growing, and mm-hmm. we saw mm-hmm. one tea shop after another that we loved struggle or some are doing well but so many have gone out of business um, either because of rising rents or because the market just wasn't here so right, right. so um, we were my partner and I were talking about how to increase awareness of tea and somehow while having tea one day we came with, up with this idea of, of doing a of, sh- of branching off of me branching off from rep radio to start talking tea to increase awareness of tea and tea culture in North America and that's really, originally our website actually said pod, uh, podcasts or conversations about tea and tea culture in North America. Now we've had some guests who are not in North America, so we sort of dropped the North America mm-hmm. focus, yeah. but that's still primarily what we're looking at. To, yeah, to by look, virtue of your location, you're, you're North American. Right, and, to, and, and we found so many interesting tea houses, tea sellers, tea people mm-hmm. yeah. in North America, in the U.S., especially in Canada, but even growing in the U.S. now, that we feel this, this needs to be showcased. People need to know it's here so that people don't just think tea in the States is tea bags or, or mm-hmm. yeah. herbal infusions. Yeah, and you've been doing this for? Our first episode was Septem- the end of September of 2014, so right. a little over two years. Oh, wow, similar to us. Yeah, yes. I yeah. 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 I noticed on the, the Talking Tea website as well, it seems like you, you're up, you, have a, you have one out, no pressure, about, about once a month. So you've got yes. a good library built up. Mm, yeah, our goal is to have, library. yeah, once in a while we might be uh, a couple weeks yeah. behind the production if we have a glitch, but usually it's once a month, yes. Yeah, and I'd like to say that I think, you're, uh, I think it's working. I mean, from what we see, saw year over year in Philly, we see a real increase, like a really noticeable increase mm-hmm. in good. interest in other types of tea. That's so, good. and that's got to be at least partly attributed to you and folks like you who yeah. are. I hope so. We have some. The torch, we know. have some following in Philly. Our, our listener base, though, is all over the world. From what I can tell, it's it's hard yeah. to mm-hmm. to judge. But, but you even met some listeners at the tea festival. Right? Yes, um, <laughs> I've met listeners. We meet a lot of uh, listeners in the New York coffee and tea festival. Uh-huh. Every, I, whenever I go there, I bump into people who say. Uh, we, we listen, we're fans. Um, but yesterday we had some, uh, yeah, at the Philly Festival we had some people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Recognized really? by your voice, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and in Chicago a few months ago, nice. I, uh, a tea seller said, I recognize you, and just by, yes. by my yes. voice. That was, yes. that was nice, yeah. Yes, it's really exciting. Even when I hear somebody say, oh, when I was uh, uh, listening to talking to you on the way here, I was like, hey, we do that too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. that kind yeah. of a just a... Yeah. Yeah. Shorten the distance between even though we're vendors and customers, now we feel like we have a kind of something in common, yeah. not just the loving tea yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And then for me, it's also been a big personal growth thing because the more I do the podcast, the more, like, for example, um, so one of our listeners said to me, who has since become a friend, said, you know, you should really, to, to learn, to, to expand what you're doing, you should learn Japanese tea ceremony. Take four classes. I took four classes, and I fell in love with it. And that was a year and a half oh, wow. ago, and now I'm still studying it. Mm-hmm. And um, narrated that prompted me to narrate and produce an audiobook version of uh, the classic, The Book of Tea, which is oh, yeah. uh, by uh, uh, Okakura, a Japanese art critic, really, who wrote about the artistic and spiritual elements of, of yes. Japanese tea traditions. So it really sort of expands your tea, expands your mind. You know, it's, it really does. Yeah, yes. for sure. It's always like like. Uh, how we met in the uh, Kevin uh, Camellia Sinensis yeah. uh, summer tea school. We were there, even though we only do Chinese tea, but it's always good to try different things. Absolutely, like, yeah. you know, like the Japanese tea, I learned so much about their process mm-hmm. and the tastings. I got a chance to try different teas all at once. I mean, yeah. just the really the interesting. Darjeeling, Darjeeling process. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Really different. Yeah. yeah. So, it, 
we like Jim was saying, we met at the school, um, listening to you, having listened to uh, several of your podcasts, yeah. and you seem to have a real keen interest in tea education. Yes. Is that one of the, uh, the elements you, you focus on when you choose interviewers? Well, I think that's what Talking Tea is about. It's mm-hmm. about increasing awareness, which is by its very nature tea education. Right. Um, and I know we spoke in Montreal. So for anybody who's interested, we actually did a podcast about that workshop in Montreal. It's called Montreal's Tea School, I think. Yeah. And at the very end, uh, after the workshop, Phil and Jen and I sat down and we had like a t- four minute chat, which is part of the podcast. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned that you're also interested in tea education. We, the whole yeah. thing was about tea education. Yeah, we will so put the, uh, sorry to interrupt, right, we yeah, will yeah, put yeah. the uh, link down in the description so. bar so that you can click through directly. But so basically what we're doing is, is educating people. Well, mm-hmm. I'm only a facilitator. You guys are the educators. Yeah. Well, and we all are, really. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so that's, so tea education, that's part of it. Yeah, that's, the, that's really what we're doing here in the podcast. So that was the chat with Ken. Now we're back at home. Yeah, it ended a little abruptly. Unfortunately, we had a long, pleasant chat with Ken, but we ran out of tape. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> so if you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe to our channel. Yeah, and don't forget to check out the uh, description. We put uh, links to Ken's Talking Tea podcast down there, and he's got a ton of information in his show notes as well. So be sure to check that out. Until then, we'll see you next time. See you.